Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk on the topic of legislative and education awareness service. Introduction. There has been a steady history of government and social policy supporting the development of individuals who are differently able so that they may have greater opportunity to participate in independent life in the communities. This amendment to the Education for All Handicapped Children Act emphasizing on the provision of service to differently able infants and toddlers, that is from birth to two years, as well as to the other preschool children. Motor development is critical to the functioning of preschool children, whether differently able or not. An effective early physical education program will minimize the likelihood of institutionalization of some of the more severely differently able individuals and will maximize the potential for independent living in society. The next point that is concept from legislation. Three primary concepts that has emerged from legislation have implication for conducting physical education for the differently able. Number one, school personnel must spell out achievable object in details and be held accountable for subsequent evolution. Number two, parents must be fully informed of the nature of the program in which they train participate. Number three, the education should take place in the most integrated setting with normal children in regular class. Each of these components of this educational delivery system require the focus to be on the individual needs and learning of children with specific disabilities. Okay, next point, intramural and interscholastic sports. Differently able children need the same opportunity for participation in intramural and interscholastic sports activity like the normal children. Furthermore, these opportunities ideally are provided in the most integrated setting. However, provisions should be made to separate the differently able from normal children during participation when it is necessary to ensure the health and safety of the student or to take into account their interest. Central theme of the provision of equal opportunity in intramural and interscholastic participation for the differently able is that of reasonable accommodation for this learner. Legal background Differently able children in the public school do not come about by chance. Rather, many laws and court cases important to the education of differently able children who have special needs make their education a fluid and dynamic process. The concept of educating differently able children in the regular public school has its root in the Brown v. Board of Education of Topekia decision that establishing the right of all children to equal education opportunity. The court wrote, education is required in the performance of our most basic responsibilities. It is the very foundation of good citizenship. Today, it is a principle in preparing him for later, training and in helping him adjust normally to his environment. In these days, it is doubtful that any child may reasonably be expected to succeed in life if he is denied that opportunity of an education. Such an opportunity where the state has undertaken to provide it is a right which must be made available to all on equal terms. Continuum of Laser Restrictive Environment There are continua of laser restrictive environments in educational settings and in the community. The laser restrictive environment in the community where the individual will live life as an adult 
is very important, but frequently not very well defined. In the school setting, the leisure restrictive environments are fairly well defined with respect to matching the severity of a problem of an individual with a setting in which the differently able individual will be placed. The suggested cascade system of leisure restrictive school environments will be as follow. Level 1 Specialized facilities that is non-public school. The differently able student need more intense physical education that can be provided in a public school that is day or residential program. Level 2 The special school setting. The differently able individual receive an individual physical education program under the direction of an adapted physical education teacher in a specially designed facilities within the public school system. Level 3. Regular physical education class and adapted physical education class that is differently able. Differently able students receive the special physical education program under the direction of the regular physical education teacher. In addition, the students spend time in a specially staffed and equipped adapted physical education setting. Specially staffed and equipped adapted physical education setting. Level 4. The regular physical education setting plus supplementary instruction and service. The differently able pupils receive the individual physical education program under the direction of the regular physical education teachers. In addition, instruction or services from an adapted physical education specialist is provided. Level 5. The regular physical education setting. The differently able student receives an individual physical education program under the direction of the regular physical education teacher in the regular class. Fundamental concept of least restrictive environment. Despite legal support for the principle of least restrictive environment, school placement of children with specific disability will be argued in informal discussion and formal hearing. The following points are critical to the concept of least restrictive environment. Number one. The placement of differently able children must be flexible and re-evaluated. Appropriate action should be taken on the re-evolution. Number two, the desirable placement goal is movement of the child to less restrictive environment where it is possible to participate in normal community and school activities with normal children. Number three, Eventual placement of the differently able in less restrictive or normalizing environments require individual program so that they can learn skills which allow for participation with normal children in normal settings. Next point that is community based physical education programs. The major goal is to provide an education so that differently able individuals could become independent adult in the community. Prerequisite to independent living in the acquisition of the physical and motor skills that will enable a differently able individual to participate in domestic, recreational and vocational life in the community. The physical and motor skill attained in instructional setting in the school should be generalized into physical activity in the community. For the most part, normal individual can make adaptation to community recreational life. However, many differently able individuals, particularly those with severe sign of differently able, may find it difficult to generalize what was taught in the public schools to community sports and physical activity. 
to overcome this problem, one of the recent initiatives that has been put front in education for differently able person is community-based assessment and programming, which is a system that provides specific curriculum context for an individual. The school curriculum focuses on behaviors and skills that an adult will be able to use in the community environment. This system requires that there should be a relationship between the differently able child curriculum and that of the normal child in the local school district and that the relationship between the school's curriculum and the physical sports and recreational skill learned with permit independent participation in the recreation of the community. This well programming for differently able person match must be made on two levels community based assessment and programming which assure the linkage between community, school, curricula and the needs of the child. Next point is normalization. Normalization means making available to the differently able patterns and conditions of everyday life which are as close as possible to the norms and patterns of the mainstreams of society. For this to occur society, views of the differently able must be consistent with the following condition. Number one, they must be perceived by society as human beings, not as subhuman. Second point, they must be perceived by society as possessing a legal and constitutional identity that is due process of law for involuntary in institutionalization as well as equal opportunity in education, housing or employment. Number third, they must be viewed as person who can adapt to the environment and acquire skills for as long as they live. Four, they must be provided opportunity by society to take full advantage of the culture. Number five, services must be provided by trained personnel with technical competency in education and rehabilitation. Number six, the human services that care for the differently able and provide opportunity for skill development must be valued and well understood by society. Number seven, the differently able must be provided opportunities to play value role and lead value life in our culture. Next point, that is coordination of delivery of services. There has been considerably emphasis on the belief that program for the differently able should be of an interdisciplinary nature. However, according to Stone Problem, have existed in the delivery of service within the system. Professional within the system have had taken on the role, functions and goals of each other. This has happened because of inadequate planning or coordination and without consideration of the effectiveness of the various professionals in their new role. As a result, we have homogeneous professionals who no longer have defined expertise and programs that are less than desirable, although Stone was not addressing physical education specifically. His view may well relate to the coordination of physical education and the related services, that is therapy. Role confusion can lead to duplication of service and some programs and vault in other, which ultimately result in a lack of comprehensive programming for differently able children. Public policy makers have assigned educational function to those who are to provide direct services and those who are provide indirect services. Direct services are those such as physical education that teach curricula section by school board and related service help differently able children gain benefit 
from the intended outcome of the direct service example physical therapy occupational therapy and recreational therapy next point that is the concept of related services before a related service such as physical therapy occupational therapy or recreational therapy can be implemented in the curriculum it should be determined whether the limitation of that particular child is such that direct service that is physical education cannot effectively deal with the child education problem a related service should be provided when a child cannot make the expected progress in skill development in physical education for instance if it is decided that a differently able child does not have the prerequisite strength of a specific muscle group to acquire a sport skill and that the physical educator cannot rectify the problem a physical therapy may be called on to provide a related service the physical therapies design a program for the specific muscle group to establish prerequisite strength and then the child can be acquired the skill to be taught by the physical educator coming to the conclusion physical education for differently able individual has been mandated for over a decade as a result of mandated physical education programs there are undoubtedly several model program in operation it is painfully clear that physical education for differently able student remain a woefully neglected and underdeveloped area of public school programming one reason differently able student are not receiving adequate institution in physical education because they are inappropriately placed by low different able children should be placed in the most appropriate least restrictive setting that meet their needs however the incidence of differently able individuals receive physical education in regular class may be considerably more than in the academic subject.